Good morning, this is Jeff Condit with 9.connects. I am a senior principal engineer um, and a PCB engineer uh, with over 40 years experience in a wide variety of areas and also have my CID. Today I'd like to talk about a very important topic uh, to a lot of people and that's inductors. Inductors are ubiquitous, they're used all over the place, but few people really have a good understanding of them. So we're going to attempt to do a deep dive where we talk about a lot of the little topics in here. Uh, because of time, we're not going to get into a bunch of actual design examples because that would have more time than we actually uh, can take. So let's jump right in and uh, start talking about inductors. First, terminology. There are three terms I'd like to, to go over uh, because they seem to be confused in today's language. Inductor, trans transformer and choke. An inductor is specifically designed to store energy to and from a magnetic field and is characterized by a value of inductance in units of Henry's. Occasionally it have, may have more than one winding, um, but it's still an inductor because it stores energy, stores and releases the energy. Transformer is a device designed to store very, very little energy but rather pass the energy through with a particular voltage or current ratio, hence it can change the impedance. Uh, typically, transformers have more than one winding because they're passing something through, although they can be a single winding type device with a tap on it like an auto transformer. A choke is a device designed uh, to be much like an in, much like an inductor, except it's designed to have lossiness, specifically focused on passing low frequencies while absorbing or blocking higher frequencies. Oftentimes it'll have more than one uh, winding, as in a multi-filer choke, uh, such as a common mode choke. So again, a choke is designed to be lossy. All right. The uh, key words I want to focus on again, inductor, stores energy, a transformer, passes energy back and forth through, and a choke absorbs it and turns it into heat. Symbology. Inductors have been drawn uh, with a lot of symbology to explain what they're doing over time, uh, but much of that has been lost. Almost every inductor I see nowadays is either the symbol in the upper left, which is just a, a set of little uh, little ripples, or it's the next to the bottom one on the left, which is just a block. And much of the rest of the meaning of the design has been lost. Well, in, in schematics, it's really important to try to convey what you're trying to do. So we really should look at some of the other things because their characteristics have a lot of effect. First of all, the early ones were made with air core, and so they were just a bunch of loops of wire, and so the symbol in the upper left is great for fixed air core inductor. But later they decided to add laminations, magnetic laminations, and so those were flat sheets that were stamped out. And the, the second one down on the right is for an iron cord inductor, particularly the two lines tend to indicate a lamination. Later they decided that uh, they didn't have to just use lamination, so they could grind up the iron and push it together into a mold and then center it into a block and form various shapes. Tapes. And those um, were basically powdered iron uh, or iron dust type things that were centered together. That's in the upper right hand corner, as shown by a series of dots in two lines instead. Uh, sometimes there's three lines instead of two. Uh, fixed ferrite inductors had to have a different signal, so instead they used dashed lines, as shown the second down on the left. Now, inductors have taps. The taps can be either fixed or variable. Um, you may not have any taps, in which case you don't draw one. If you do draw one, they're typically drawn uh, coming out of one of the one of the bends, one of the little points in the wires, as shown third one down on the left. If it happens to be that the inductor is a variable one, say with a roller that goes along the coils to pick which tap that it's on, then you'd end up having a symbol like the one on the right, which uses an arrow. An arrow, an arrow means that it is adjustable, hence an, an adjustable air cord inductor would have an arrow through it, uh, as shown fourth down on the left. And similar with the other ones with the different core materials. If instead of being uh, easily adjustable by the operator, it's something that's going to be adjusted once in assembly or calibration and the left forever, you really want to pin it in place. And so they draw a T-shaped symbol to show that that's adjustable, but then it's kind of pinned in place. So, and you can, of course, combine an adjustable one with taps, etc. cetera. Uh, down on the bottom, you also see an example of a relay drawn with a block coil. Uh, most of the relays are drawn in a different way. It's not shown on this diagram. And also, just for your reference, a goniometer is a device where there's two coils at right angles, except by one at 45 degrees and it's used for measuring angles because it rotates and then, therefore you get a differential induction between the two, core, uh, two coils and can determine the angle. Um, again, 
if you go to transformers, the symbology is very much the same. Two lines for like laminations, dashed lines for ferrite, dotted lines for iron dust, uh, null lines for air core. Uh, again, uh, an arrow uh, shows adjustability and a T pin shows that it's pinned together. A variac is actually a single winding, but it's a transformer because it's designed not to be an inductor, but instead to transfer energy through. But the two windings are actually split together by virtue of where the tap is. So that's what you'd see. Um, that's why a uh, Variac has an arrow going to one of, the, one of the points in the winding. Over on the right, you'll see power transformers. When you have power transformers, um, they oftentimes are designed to take one AC voltage and transform it in some other AC voltage. And so when you do that, it's, uh, it's commonplace to, and uh, preferred to actually put the nominal uh, winding voltages drawn inside each winding and of course each winding if it's for a lower voltage will have less turns on it than the longer one. So these are all part of the paradigm of trying to make the symbols for inductors tell you specifically what's going on. Uh, there's also an, uh, there are also auto transformers or, or transformers in which one, one uh, winding, one pin is actually routed uh, from the front to the back, from the input to the output, and hence it's actually shown wired together in the diagram as in the auto transformer, second over and second line down. Um, that allows you to take two wires from the input and put them onto two pins, take two wires from the output and put them onto two pins, and two pins end up getting wired together. So understand that because that's really important if you're trying to have a, an, a schematic be something that is meaningful to people. So. Uh, there is some symbology for chokes, and this is the usage is diminishing because people don't really use the term choke as much. It's less and less understood. Uh, some people call it just use chokes and inductors. Um, uh, they use them interchangeably now. So, but again, remember chokes are intentionally lossy inductors. Basically, the symbology is the same as for inductors, except that it might state choke or RFC, which is short for radio frequency choke, or it may have specific impedance values at frequencies, or it may be depicted by a coil shown wound over a resistor of either type symbol, either a block symbol or a resistor symbol, or it could have the little choke symbol as shown in there beside that. I never personally have seen that, that, uh, that one. But uh, usage example is typically like where you're blocking EMI at the power input. Your goal is not to just leave the EMI floating around in the world, but pretty much to eat it up and turn it into energy so it doesn't doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't doesn't reflect back and bounce around, and it doesn't go out. So uh, that lossiness is a key factor.